Hey guys, welcome back. Bart here. Uh, I thought I'd do an upgrade video about the belt grinder. Uh, I got a lot of uh, requests and questions if I had any plans, if I would sell any plans. Um, and no, I don't have any plans, but I can share all the design thoughts and uh, dimensions with you. Um, but first, before I'll do that, uh, just a quick talk about my YouTube channel. Uh, I crossed the 10k subscribers, uh, now on to 12k. For me that's really special, uh, knowing that there are so many people around the world watching my channel. Um, and uh, I also got a lot of nice comments about uh, videos with the belt grinder or the bending machine. Um, so big thanks to that, big thanks to all the new subscribers and I uh, hope to uh, grow this channel a little bit more. Um, and uh, for that also a, a special thanks to um, the YouTube channel Made in Poland. Uh, these guys shared my video and I think uh, it helped a little bit kickstarting uh, belt grinder video. Um, so uh, if you haven't checked these guys out, it's a channel, uh, it's a little bit like make it extreme, maybe less extreme, but a little bit more quality. So uh, I, I like the channel and uh, yeah, check these guys out. So uh, uh, yeah, to share uh, or to celebrate this a little bit, um, I thought uh, let's uh, share with you uh, the dimensions and uh, give you guys a little uh, Christmas present uh, for that. So uh, I don't want to sell anything, I just uh, want to share it with you and uh, make it open source. So the first design uh, things is, uh, and that's also why I didn't make any uh, drawings. Um, is I think a project like this you should use the materials that you got. Uh, if you're building uh, from a, a drawing then you need to buy all the material, uh, especially uh, the, the right dimensions and that will uh, be uh, very expensive. Um, most of the metal that I used came from the scrapyard um, so that's why I built it and designed it in the process. Um, so yeah, if you design something yourself, then uh, first check out what material you have or what you can easily uh, get. Um, and don't pay new prices for everything. A few things I did buy new, like the uh, square tubing or the square stock, um, but all the plates are all uh, scrapyard uh, uh, parts, even the motor. So, um, uh, about the uh, pivoting of the machine, I think that's one uh, feature that a lot of people like. Uh, pivoting at the center of gravity, um, although it's really heavy, it's uh, really nice to, uh, to rotate. Um, uh, some people were asking the table, is it uh, fixed or will it pivot with the machine? Uh, as you can see, it does pivot. Um, if you want a fixed uh, working table, then um, uh, please check out Jeremy Smith, uh, his design. It's a really good design also, um, and he has a, a system where the plate is fixed and the machine is uh, moving. Um, I can use the table on the horizontal position. Uh, I can pull this one out, rotate it 90 degrees, put it back in, and then the table is in horizontal position. Uh, no problem with that, the only downside is I can only rotate it 90 degrees and nothing in between. So uh, yeah, just think about what you need, what you want and uh, design it from there. Um, I could not combine these two uh, with the big uh, angle plates here with the pivoting point. Um, so I just uh, yeah, thought for me this was the best design. Um, Next, let's start with some uh, basic dimensions um, and share a cat drawing because I did draw something. Let's start with the base plate. Base plate is 50 centimeters. Sorry, but I'm a metric guy. 50 centimeters by 29. Um, and it's uh, one centimeter, ten millimeters thick uh, plate. The basic uh, construction on top here is twenty centimeters by twelve. Uh, it's a uh, five millimeter thick, um, but of course you can use different ones. 
Um, if you're making it like this, make sure the motor has enough uh, freedom that it can pivot. Um, take a few centimeters extra if you want, but don't make it too high because it will make it less stable. Um, then on the top frame, the fifteen plates are uh, around twenty three centimeters uh, cross section uh, diameter um, and um, if you're bolting the uh, pivoting point down, um, you could also bolt it here ninety degrees. But um, then, if you use the, the key, um, it will get stuck if it was up high here. It won't have enough room. Um, you could also bolt it 90 degrees down, but then it's harder to reach. So if you make it on an angle 45 degrees down, then it's always uh, accessible from horizontal and vertical position. Uh, you can even leave the key in. So that's something about that. Um, the main plate over here, um, it's 12 millimeters thick. Um, you can use a little bit thinner or thicker, uh, whatever you got. Um, and the plate is Fifty five centimeters long and thirty one centimeters high. Um, the wheels are twenty seven centimeters apart. Sorry, twenty. Wait, make it exact. Yeah, twenty seven. Um, and the front wheel to the back wheel is um, 65. My wheels were um, from the scrapyard. These front wheels, they're uh, hard plastic. Uh, this wheel I made myself. Uh, this wheel is uh, 7 uh, centimeters. These are a li little bit bigger, they are 10. Um, and my drive wheel is 11 centimeters. Um, for the drive wheel, you have to consider how many horsepower does your motor have. Um, if your um, uh, motor hasn't that much horsepower, you need a, a smaller wheel that it will still have the torque to turn it around, but it will have less speed. Um, if the wheel gets too big, yeah, the torque goes uh, down, so you need a big motor if you want a big wheel but then you can also uh, uh, run a little bit faster. So we see what your motor can do. Um, uh, I used a, a 2 kilowatt motor for this one. Um, uh, I would not, uh, let's say a 2 horsepower um, motor, um, I would not use any less than that. Um, for this one the speed is right. Um, I think uh, it has enough uh, power. Uh, I, yeah, use a big motor if you can. Use a uh, nice and solid steel if you have it. Um, don't use any uh, uh, thin tubing or something like that because it will vibrate and you really want a stiff frame. The top arm is around 50 centimeters, 50. 0.5 centimeters uh, long. Um, you can make it a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, but I put the uh, uh, adjustment wheel at um, uh, 37 centimeters from the pivoting point here in the back. But I don't think that's really critical. Uh, the only thing that you could consider is I want to have this a little bit more horizontal, so not on top here. And you will always have some play, um, because if you don't have any play, then it won't move. But, um, and if you uh, imagine putting this arm all the way up, and it's over here, then any play will affect the adjustment of the wheel. 
if you put this arm horizontal maybe it will move a little bit sideways but it does not change the angle of the belt so I preferred to have a little bit more horizontal arm and put it on top here uh, although I think both should be fine but then you really need to uh, have a strong um, rotating point uh, over here so uh, for me that's uh, nice um, I do like the uh, pressure springs um, I used the adjustable one but if you want to buy something this was a 400 Newton uh, it was 650 but I turned it down a little bit let some air out um, so now it's at uh, around 400 Newton so if you want to buy one um, yeah pick around 400 for the uh, square oops <laughs> that's the problem if it ro rotates too easy let's just fix it um, for the uh, solid bar stock it's a uh, 40 by 40 uh, centimeters I would uh, use solid because uh, yeah it is heavy it is a little bit more expensive but you really have uh, some uh, uh, vibrations in it if you use uh, um, tubing so if you can use solid uh, so let's talk about the uh, adjustment of the wheels um, I can move the table up and down but I can also adjust this uh, one um, till uh, 45 degrees on both sides um, I'm not sure if I will use it a lot but I think it's still handy to have um, if you don't have a milling machine to mill in a, a radius uh, slot then you can also drill some holes in it um, I think you don't need to use it at every angle um, especially if you have a movable table and that's the same for the pivoting point on here um, yeah uh, you can use it at an angle or different angles but I think 99% uh, you will use it or horizontal or vertical um, so then you can also just drill two holes and be finished with it uh, saves you a lot of uh, machining the working table itself it's 30 centimeters by 15 cut at a round angle it was actually a big round plate so I just cut this one cut this one out uh, what more um, maybe uh, the pivoting point back here it's five centimeters uh, on top of the frame um, but again yeah just uh, use what you got uh, I think these dimensions are not really critical um, just a few design things that you want to keep in mind um, there are a lot of things I like about this uh, design um, but I still believe it's not perfect and if I would build it again I would change a, a few things um, and I think it's also important to share that with you guys uh, one thing that I would change is making a, a bigger and longer hinge back here to have it more stable it is really stable uh, sideways um, I don't have any problem with that but um, yeah uh, as uh, Tom from Oxtool said um, nothing too strong ever broke <laughs> um, I would make this a little I think this is a weak point on the machine so uh, I would make this a little bit bigger and then um, you can consider does the uh, size of the um, axle uh, help or does it need to be longer um, both are true uh, and you can choose what you want pivoting point tension arm adjustment wheel um, so if you make this one longer you make it like uh, 20 centimeters you can imagine the, if there's a little bit play in here uh, it won't move too much over here but it's not only the length of the pivoting point it's also the diameter and I made mine a little bit uh, small only 10 millimeter because I used a 10 millimeter bolt um, but if you imagine the same but then with a really big pivoting point the arm tension wheel so maybe it's not longer 
but it uh, has a, a bigger size in here. The rotating point is in here, it's in here. So it will hold from this point to this point. And because this is further apart, it will also help with the play. So you will always have some play in it, otherwise it cannot move. Um, and the play just make the uh, make the axle or make the pivoting point a little bit uh, bigger like this and maybe a little bit longer. So consider what you have and what you want to use but uh, both will help and I think this is a, a little bit weak point in my design um, so yeah maybe you can uh, change that and make it even better. Uh, next thing that I would change is um, uh, although I did like TIG welding um, and yeah I should use more bevel uh, on the welds if I weld thicker material I got a lot of comments about that um, but um, if I would build it again I would only bolt this plate then you have to make a, a, another construction with the pivoting point because it's welded on here also but I would only bolt the fixing plates for the uh, arm uh, on the frame. So use a thicker spacer in between here, drill some holes through it and just bolt it on the frame. Then you uh, will not have any um, welding um, shrinkage uh, because it did uh, pull a little bit on me also here. So I had to grind something of this square stock off to make it a little bit tapered to make it fit. Um, for one machine that's not a problem but it was a little bit more machining and not necessary. Um, so I think it's easier to machine and also easier to maintain because this will get um, a grinding grit inside um, and sometimes it gets stuck. When I was building it, it, it already got stuck uh, one time and I really had to hammer it out. Um, so if you can uh, put the bolts out and undo the plate, then it's really uh, easier to clean um, and it's a lot easier to uh, um, to make also. So that's something I would change, um, less welding, more bolting and even the pivoting point down here you can also consider uh, bolting this on and not welding it. Um, the other thing, the last thing that I would change is um, I put the tensioning arm, sorry, put it on the right angle for you. I uh, put a tensioning arm on top of the frame. Um, if I would build it again, I put it a little bit more to the left side, a little bit more outward. So the wheel comes a little bit in and then the belt is staying closer to the frame. Um, that's This machine is stable enough. But I had a lot of spacious spacers in here and the uh, drive wheel is on the, the far side of the uh, motor. Um, so there's a little bit more torque on the bearings um, and if you put it a little bit closer then uh, the, it will be a little bit better construction. So these were the main dimensions and my design thoughts, uh, something to consider if you're building your own. Um, I hope it helps a little bit for all you guys who are building or planning to build your own, uh, make it a little bit do-it-yourself project. Uh, I think uh, with the right machines and uh, the right uh, uh, patience maybe uh, you can build your own. And um, yeah, think about uh, uh, if you want to do a quick build and or a quality build, um, both are good, I think. Um, if you're doing a quick build, you learn a lot from it. Um, maybe it won't be a, a really nice machine to look at or something, but um, uh, as long as it's safe, just uh, keep that in mind. For now, that was it. Um, hope you liked it. If you like it, then uh, like the video. Uh, if you haven't, please subscribe. Support my channel uh, by sharing the video uh, or subscribing and um, for now um, I wish you a, a nice Christmas and uh, see you next year. Bye bye.